just taken delivery of 20 boxes of Baker's Fondant. I use this as a supplementary winter feed. From now on through to spring, if I find any light stocks, I give them a slab of this fondant. They'll use it as needed and uh, won't store it down in the brew chamber. And now for possibly my least favourite job of the lot concerning bees, bee farming. That is fondant, Baker's Fondant. I'm going to cut it up for, for winter feed for the bees and a bag of plain flour on top. The flower's just there as an anti-sticking agent. The box is there for uh, to rest the fondant in, try and keep its shape. Let's have a go. Just a bit in the bottom of a bucket. Right, here we go. Let the stickiness commence. God, I hate this job. So, let's get that up there. There may be better ways of doing this, but I've never found them. It is possible to buy proper bee fondant already bagged up. Saves a lot of this chew and hassle, but it's a lot more expensive. And I'm afraid that old Yorkshire trait just keeps rearing its ugly head. A bit like cutting out old comb. Every year I say no more, no more. We'll have a change. I'll burn the frames with the comb, buy new new frames and with this I keep saying I will buy the custom made fondant save all this but at the end of the day the savings are quite considerable and so I continue never learn as we get to the end of January the bees will have eaten all the syrup I gave them as this was the last food source in it was stored in the innermost part of the nest and therefore is used first as the days lengthen the queens lay more eggs each day and the nest expands outwards these extra mouths mean food is used at an increasing rate. Some stocks can start to run short of food, while others will have more than enough to see them right through into spring. Every couple of weeks from now on, I go around and lift or heft each of my stocks, and any that are a bit light in weight are given fondant. The bees couldn't handle liquid feed at this time of the year, but even as we get into March or early April, I'll only ever feed fondant and not liquid syrup. Fondant's taken down and used by the bees as they require it and not stored in the comb. I'm concerned that liquid feed fed in spring could be transported up into the honey boxes when they're put on. I don't want to take the risk of contaminating my honey. It is madness, I know, but there we go. That's another box done. Get it onto some bees. And the result is 12 to 14 slabs out of each box. Uh, as a bit of justification for this sort of lunacy, I've just priced up commercially available bee fondant and it's about double the price I'm paying for this baker's fondant. Uh, I agree and I accept that the commercially available stuff may have uh, extra ingredients in and maybe more nutritious. I don't know. But um, I can cut five to six boxes of this fondant up an hour uh, and that's saving me somewhere about £100. £100 an hour? Is it worth it? It certainly is to me. See if they need any 
like um, you couldn't actually see any bees. Cold and the hook is right down. Gouge a bit of the polythene out. There we go. That will serve them. Whoa. I think we want a bit of smoke on them, they're a bit tetchy. Just put it a little bit really on these two. Oh, oh yeah, ladies, calm down. There, they'll never be enough. Gratitude for you. Well, they are very light. Very light. Oh, yeah. Oh. The hell, the best place to see. That. You know they're going to need that. They might be alright for a week or two. Certainly, we're enough to get them through the spring. bees down there. There they are. It's fairly cold. They're well down. Anyway, they're all right. And then after getting distracted, I've forgotten whether or not they were heavy enough. Check them again. Tell you what, let see it. Here and here and there. Yeah, I 
what's to do with this and this. But we'll have a look at the front of this hive. We can see the yellow spotting. And the mouse cat there. Is it just dysentery or is it Nazima and dysentery? I just don't know. There's a lot I don't know. Because you'll realise if you keep following me. Nazima, it's a single cell parasite lives in the gut of the bees. Uh, there's two types, Nazima apis and Nazima serranii. Nazima apis can cause the bees to have dysentery and it also causes them, the populations to dwindle away through the late winter and into early spring. The only way to accurately diagnose Nazima is uh, for microscopic examination of the guts of the bees. Sometimes when I take the lid off, if I can't see any live bees, I'll just blow into the, uh, the holes in the top and that sets the bees off buzzing. Proof they're alive. Stronger ones have really got through the feed. Difficult to know. You lift the colony and you think you're sort of loose. Touch with reality, really, of just how, how heavy they are. But yeah, they're, they're fairly like they're doing these things. Come on, Chris, come on. Fifteen hours on this site, and I started at this end, just checking them for fondant. Two or three have uh, needed a slab. One there needs it, but they all poured out, so I'm just letting them settle down before I, I uh, put a fondant block on them. And out of the fifteen, fourteen are still alive, which for this year is uh, good, really good. I'm losing a few, and uh, the only dead one is this one. Number 83. See the spotting on top of the frame there. Dysentery. Uh, and I'm suspecting Nazima. I haven't got a microscope. I don't do uh, any sort of scientific checks at all on the bees. I should really. Uh, I'm a bit ham-fisted at times. But uh, there's certainly dysentery. Doesn't necessarily mean Nazima. But with Nazima, Nazima apis anyway, there's, uh, there is often dysentery. Not with Nazima serrani, but... Right, we'll have 83 gathered up, back to the shed, and get it cleaned up. Thirteen, and the mucky mouse guard. We'll be looking inside, thirteen. Spot in there, they're obviously not very strong, but there is bees there. And uh, I've given them a slab of fondant. They don't need it from a, a weight point of view, the hive's quite heavy. But uh, I like to give stocks that are showing signs of this uh, just fresh, clean feed, really. Uh, that dysentery could be caused through fermenting honey or fermenting syrup inside the hive. It could be an azema. But uh, 
some people would say they're not worth saving stocks like this but I'm going to give them a chance it could turn out to be one of those years I could be glad of every stock of bees I can save just have that feeling somehow anyhow yeah, didn't expect them to be alive little bonus for all the rain and do a lot of dead bees, a lot of dead hives that's where you can see the see something a bit more positive it's only a little sight this but uh, got some nice stocks here it's good to see them again Isn't that wrong with them? Just going to check those rescued stocks for weight and see if they want any fondant on. I often think one of the holy grails of bee farming is to have all your stocks uh, of a similar strength. It never seems to happen with me. Here we have an absolute brahma of a stock. Colossal. And others are just occupying an odd frame or two. I never do get them even. I keep trying, but I never do. And Hazel Catkins giving a bit of pollen. Nice to see. Those rescued colonies. Just glad this flight's over dry ground rather than over all that water. As usual, some are stronger than others. These two are facing the shade. They will be slower off them there. Bees are in out of 108, they look to be okay. 48, doesn't seem to be anything happening at all. I think we'll take the lid off, just see if there's any sign of life. Ah, that's good to see. They're all right. Just haven't got going yet. A bit cold the way they're facing. I never tire of sights and sounds like this. <laughs> 